Minister of India. Thank you, Madam President, and warm congratulations on your presidency. When threats are global, Madam President, the response cannot be just local. The world has to come together to defeat these threats. This assertion by Prime Minister Modi while addressing the 90th Interpol General Assembly in New Delhi last year underlines the urgent imperative of collective action from the international community to counter transnational organized crime and terrorism. Given the paucity of time, I will make six quick points. One, we need to address growing political or state complicity in suppressing the activities of transnational criminal groups. Some states continue to provide support and safe havens to offenders of crime syndicates who have not only committed serious crimes, but also continue to harm the economies of their adversary states through means such as counterfeiting and the dissemination of the currency of the adversary state, as well as the supply of arms, drugs, and other means to support terror activities across the border. Actions of such states should be held accountable. Two, many states award economic citizenship to criminal and economic offenders, providing sanctuaries in order to evade their arrest and extradition to other countries in return for such criminals bringing foreign currency deposits to the state accomplice. This should stop. Such states should fulfill their obligations under the concerned resolutions of the Security Council, which affirms this as a primary responsibility of member states in the endeavor to prevent and counter terrorist acts. Three, member states which suffer due to poor governance and inadequate oversight on financial institutions are more vulnerable for exploitation by terrorist entities and organized criminals. The implementation of the recommendations of the Financial Action Task Force in strengthening the governance structures of financial and economic assets should be one of our topmost priorities to counter this menace. Four, we need to work towards enhancing cooperation amongst law enforcement agencies and governments around the world in intelligence gathering and sharing and deterrent measures. Cooperation in the legal processes such as effective freezing of the proceeds of crime, early return of offenders and the efficient repatriation of the proceeds of crime should be enhanced and streamlined. A common platform should be set up for sharing experiences and best practices, including successful cases of extradition, gaps in existing systems of extradition and legal assistance. The principles of the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, the United Nations Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime, especially areas related to international cooperation, should be fully and effectively implemented. Five, Investing in technological capabilities and fostering innovation is vital to stay ahead in the battle against organized crime, developing tools to track and combat cyber threats, disrupting illicit financial flows, and improving border security measures are essential components of this technological response. Lastly, if the trillion dollar question is to ensure peace, do we have a peace infrastructure representative of the current times and contemporary realities? Or is 2023 the new 1945? Will 1945 security plumbing work today? Clearly, the UN Security Council of yesterday is always late today. I assure you, Madam President, that India remains committed to strengthening the international community's endeavors to curb the escalating threats of organized crime and terrorism, ensuring that our collective response is both effective and sufficient. Thank you.